Now we're just going to take it for a little flight over the what's left the Boundary Falls smelter site. Uh, Tim Warhol, he owns uh, owns the site, so we went for a little tour around there. We're just going to give you a, kind of a little quick uh, tour of it. You know, this is the kind of hill behind this place. There's a couple other little prospect mines and stuff that we kind of checked out, and the kids were up there hiking around there. Um, the Boundary Falls smelter is the, uh, the, the smallest of the three major smelters around here, operated about over 100 years ago. I think it shut down around 1909 or so. And had uh, two big tram lines from the number seven and uh, the Par city of Paris mines that uh, that fed this smelter. Uh, and there's a rail trail there you can see on the right hand side that uh, goes right by there. So it was serviced by a, a rail spur. Um, there's quite a bit of stuff there. A lot of uh, you can't see it from the air too much, but we saw it on the ground. There's quite a lot of uh, uh, rock work and stuff. Uh, I guess with a I'm not really sure how it was all set up there with the conveyors and stuff. There was a lot of buildings there, just a crazy amount. It looks like uh, the Boundary Falls smelter had three big smokestacks and uh, pictures you see of it. Uh, it looks like the, um, all the bricks and stuff are still there. It looks to me like the big uh, smokestack they had there was either fell over or pulled over. And there's just a huge pile of rubble and bricks there. So there's uh, thousands and thousands of bricks on the site here. You can't see it from the air here. but um, so. Pretty, there's quite a bit of other uh, um, iron work works in there, mostly all uh, stuff that was riveted, uh, big um, big vessels and uh, pipe, a lot of pipe, handmade pipe from would have been built around uh, 1900 or so when uh, the smelter was constructed. And there's lots of other little mines around there. We're about um, about a mile or so south of, of uh, the Mac May mine that's uh, that Golden Dawn is operating right now they're fishing around there and trying to operate it. you can kind of see it up it's not in the pictures here but it's just up the hill from that area so this is a pretty rich area in here there's uh, some gold in here and uh, mostly copper so this uh, smelter was actually set up for copper and that would have been the major byproduct of this it was just I think it was called a mat which about fit the, the material that process was uh, they produced was about 50% copper, and then it had to go back. Uh, was, they call that blister copper, I think. It had to go back and be re-refined to make a pure, uh, pure copper product out of it. So, and you can kind of see between, right between the highway. So actually, the slag goes right to the edge of the creek. And environmental standards weren't all that stringent back in the day, I guess. <laughs> I think a lot of the slag ended up in the creek, by the looks of it. It looks like sawdust down there, but it's not. It's rock. Kind of a pretty cool, cool machine down there. It looks like a real old uh, well drilling machine. I don't know, probably from the 30s or 40s. It was there, an old truck. I don't know, a bunch of winches on it. And I think that's what it was used for, drilling wells. Or probably for maybe trip testing core samples. Some kind of a drilling machine. That's the end of the slag pile there. And just slide back along the highway there. It's a pretty narrow little strip there. Quite a lot of stuff in there. Uh, if you go through there and I had a metal detector, you could spend a lot of time. There's, I'm sure there's a lot of artifacts buried under there. Other than just brick and stuff. Now the Grand Forks smelter, there's virtually nothing left of it. There's quite a lot of that. It looks very similar to the Greenwood smelter in a lot of ways, the remains of it. Lots of big rock walls and stuff in there. Quite a bit of masonry material. So here's, uh, kids are just hiking up the hill there. There's some little, a little prospect mine in there. And they hiked up there. It only goes in about 15 feet or so. That was pretty common back in the day. They would, uh, you know, it was a pretty rich mineralized area. And then when they're prospecting, they would find a quartz vein or something. And then they would just go in there and chase that vein. As they didn't know from the surface if it got wider or smaller. And lots of times it just kind of petered out. Eh? So they just kind of chased the vein and hoping it would get wider. And then it would just peter out. Or, and they would.
wouldn't uh, proceed any further. We didn't drill too much back then, so it was pretty common for them to do that.